One picture can tell a woman's health story. From this health snapshot, I can tell what she's inherited from her mother and her father. I can tell about her environment and her diet. I can even tell if she has uncontrolled diabetes. I can tell if she's developing calcifications in her arteries, which may be the earliest sign of heart disease. This is that single image. As a breast radiologist, I've been studying the story of women for 10 years. I started in a small private practice in the U.S. back in 2008. And one day, a very informed woman came to my practice, and she asked me to perform a breast ultrasound test along with her screening mammogram. I asked her, do you have a breast lump? She said, no. Then I asked her, do you have a family history of breast cancer? And again, she said no. She told me that she had no problems, but that she had dense breast tissue. And she had been told that in addition to having her screening mammogram, she should also have an ultrasound in order to be able to detect cancer earlier. I listened to her, and then I responded, there is no evidence to support you having this second test. And in fact, by having this second test, you might have a false positive that might require another invasive procedure. And in the end, we may still not find cancer. Boy, was I wrong. You see, when radiologists like myself look at a mammogram, before we look for cancer, we first study a woman's density. By studying breast density, we not only understand the potential for a woman to develop breast cancer in her future, but the likelihood that we can find cancer today. That is because breast density is a woman's personal biomarker, as unique as her fingerprint. So what is breast density? It's the proportion of white fibrous tissue to the amount of black fat tissue seen on a mammogram. You cannot feel your breasts for breast density. You need a mammographic interpretation, and you need to be of screening age to have a reliable measurement. By testing these proportions, the more fibrous tissue we have, the more white that mammogram becomes. This becomes problematic because cancer is also white. In this example, of four women, the woman most on the right has very white or fibrous breast tissue in her mammogram. That makes it very hard for me to find breast cancer, as compared to the woman whose mammogram is on the far left, where she has little to no density, and it's much easier to find breast cancer. When I'm looking for cancer in a woman with dense breasts, it's like finding a snowball in a snowstorm. In this example, this woman has very low breast density. You can see the cancer from the back of the room. It hits you in the face, there's no question. But if you contrast that to this woman, where she has extremely dense breast tissue, I cannot find the three centimeter breast cancer hiding in those breasts. Now, by 2014, states in the US had been passing legislation this was greatly the work of breast cancer survivors and patient advocates. And what that legislation <laughs> mandated was that women be informed of their breast density, and some states mandated that they be told that there was a reduced mammographic sensitivity. They also mandated that some places should offer second tests, like a supplemental ultrasound or an MRI. By 2014, my practice and not myself, we couldn't ignore this information anymore. Because now we knew nearly 50% of the women in the US had dense breast tissue. We knew that we were missing about 50% of the breast cancers in those women with dense breasts. So we decided that we would start a supplemental screening program, and we would start with ultrasound. The same tests I had said no to six years earlier. 
This time, though, we decided to use new technology. We were going to use automated breast ultrasound so that we could have a more objective test that was standardized and hopefully reduce false positives. Within six months of implementing this program, we found two cancers that were in normal mammograms. These women just had dense breasts. By finding these cancers with the automated ultrasound, we were able to detect early stage disease. This meant that these women did not need to have mastectomy. Instead, they could have breast sparing surgery and they didn't need chemotherapy. This early stage disease was curable. This experience transformed me as a physician. It made me wonder how many cancers had I missed? It also made me ask what other technology is out there that hasn't made its way into the mainstream? And was there one test that we could use for all women, regardless of density? These questions led me to a journey, and I realized that to answer them, I needed to go further and farther in the world. So I left my private practice, and I asked General Electric for a job. They made me the medical director for automated breast ultrasound. And their first task was to send me to China. You see, in China, 80% of the women have dense breast tissue. And mammography is not the screening test of choice. Ultrasound is. And what I found is that they still struggled with the same problems we did in the rest of the world, which is finding cancer but reducing false positives. So when I was in Guangzhou, local experts there were using automated ultrasound to standardize this exam, and they compared it to mammography. And what they found is with a consistent approach, they had the same cancer detection as mammography, if not better, but they also had a low recall rate. Two years I traveled across the US and then internationally from Puerto Rico to Dubai. And what I found is that breast density has many different contributing factors. So for instance, alcohol affects breast density. So if a woman has more than four alcoholic drinks a day, it can increase her breast density. Hormone replacement therapy after menopause can also increase breast density. Environmental factors like pollution can increase breast density. And so can low levels of inflammation in the body. So one group of researchers decided to explore this further. And what they found is that giving women low-dose aspirin before the age of 50 could actually reduce breast density. By the end of the two years, I had more questions. And I found myself in Queenstown, New Zealand. And here I met the CEO of a local company called Volpara. He and I sat down and realized we had many of the same questions, such as what is the biology of breast density that causes it, to, causes it to be an independent risk factor for breast cancer? And could we effectively reduce this density and thus reduce the risk of developing breast cancer? And then lastly, could we use new tools like artificial intelligence to help breast radiologists like myself better detect breast cancer in women with dense breasts. At this point, I realized I needed to find these answers. So I took a chance, and I moved my family to New Zealand. I joined Volpara, and I evaluate patients while still trying to find the answers to these questions. Today, 38 out of 50 states in the US have passed legislation that mandates that women be notified of their breast density. There's now a federal push saying that there should be a uniform way of telling women with no variation from state to state. British Columbia in Canada has been reporting breast density to all women. Three other Canadian provinces are notifying women who have the highest breast density. And then in Western Australia, they've been notifying all women of their breast density. Yet, in the UK, New Zealand, and much of the world, we do not routinely collect or report breast density. So why is that? Well, there's two big hurdles. The first obstacle is there's no consensus as to what tests can best detect breast cancer in women with breast, dense breasts. 
Some people feel it's ultrasound, others advocate for MRI or molecular breast imaging. The concern, though, is that by doing a second test, we increase the cost of breast cancer screening. Furthermore, each of these tests has their own false positive rate, which means we're not finding cancer, but we're looking at more lesions and suspecting they might be cancer, and then recommending more invasive tests. But new technology is addressing these concerns. Abbreviated MRI is reducing the cost of an MRI exam and the amount of time a woman has to spend in the scanner. Automated ultrasound is finding a way to do this test objectively. So then, what's the other obstacle? Well, the medical community is concerned that by notifying women of their breast density and the fact that it's an independent risk factor for breast cancer and reduces your mammographic sensitivity will cause more anxiety for women. But I ask you, if density was a risk factor for prostate cancer, would we hesitate to tell men? Globally, we need to collect this information because by studying and reporting breast density, we'll be able to come up with better solutions as to how to screen all women in the most cost-effective way. Every day, nine women in New Zealand will be notified that they have breast cancer. One of those women will be Maori. Here, we have the opportunity to be the leaders in collecting this information and also to be able to find the strategy to best screen all women around the world. We must not miss this opportunity. Thank you. <laughs>